Hello there. In this video, I want to share with you a special extension for Stable Diffusion that allowed you to animate all steps in a process of creating or denoising the image and creating a very beautiful digital art. Beside being very nice animations, it's also provide for us tool to see how our prompt work or how the other components can work together. So to access this extension, first we need to install it. For this, in your Stable Diffusion local installations, go to Extension tab. And for this video, I'm using Automatic 11.11 installation. So inside, go to the tab, Extensions, Available, and click on Load From. Next, in the search, type Steps. One we're looking for is a step animation, animation installed. You'll notice mine is already said installed because I did install it before. In yours, if you don't have it, it will have it installed. Just click on install, it will upload it. It's not very big plugin, so it shouldn't take very much time. After this, I highly recommend for you to go to install it tab and click on a check for updates. If you have any new updates available, this should showing in an update tab that new versions available and then you can go click apply and restart in some cases after apply and restart you maybe need restart your stable diffusion server i find this is about half of the time everything is updated so i need to restart my server and i need to update plugin and restart again but generally when it's done you should have it this step animation drop down with special menu available for you so let's go ahead and see how it works first we need going and put it some prompts i'm using rpg version 4 checkpoint or model and for this i'm going to use the prompts directly from rpg manual also we want to change sampling method to recommend it and it will be dps to two uh, plus plus to s cars also I want to increase steps to 55 sampling steps and we'll set our width 512 and high 7068. This is a settings, it's what model was training with. So it's best settings for the getting the best result out of this checkpoint. We'll leave it seed minus one in CFG7. The recommendations for RPG4 from 5.5 to about seven and a half. But you always kind of experiment and see which get a better result. At this time, we go ahead and just click generate. Notice we did not enable the script. And as a result, we'll just have it only one single image. But as we was rendering, some process was going on. So let's go record this. For this, we expand our steps animation. We'll click on script enabled. I leave it codex of X264. You can try experiment with different codex, even included ProRes. We don't want interpolation, we'll just save it on a blend. Duration, this is how many seconds. I will set 15 seconds. Also, I don't want to skip any step at this time. And additional duration for last frame. It's meaning when render is completed, you want kind of stop and freeze. Currently it does not do this. I'm going to put it three seconds. So it's meaning when render is completed, last frame, it will pause for about three seconds to see the final result. Run on incomplete. If you don't process all the steps, if, if um, happening interruptions or you uh, aborted or other things that will still create. Also right here, checkbox created animation. So when this is set, let's go ahead and click Generate. As it generated inside your text to image folder, you will have two additional folders created. One, Intermediate, where you can see it's creating all of these frames as it's going. And inside the animations, you will have the multiple animations created. Okay, when animation completed, let's look on our server. We can say right here how many uh, images was created what quality is mp4 was creating for us so let's go ahead to back to our folder where we have it our animation also notice all of these frames was rendered 
Now they delete it after animation is completed. You could enable protection of the files if you don't want them deleted and if you want to use it for any of your presentations or work or maybe as a base photo for future. And right here we have it, our animations. And now we can preview. You can see this is our first creation. So it was created um, fractal noise kind of blob. This is not necessarily the first first step, but it's again when it's start render. And now we can create and you can see how AI takes step by step to adjust and create the image. Of course, this is what we created. It's a text from image. But I found actually quite a bit useful when we're doing image to image. On this case, I can see specifically what steps I can use it or what CFG or how much of the denoise string I should use it on the beginning. This is a very nice tool for me to optimize my prompt. And also, we're going to use it control net for this. We can see how much control net will affect this as well. So for this, let's go ahead and put it our image we're going to use. And I will use this photo I took about a couple of years ago of the model sitting in a chair. Notice we have a suitcase. So this is will be our original image. After this, we can go inside and set. Let's go do say what we've done before. We're going with 55 steps. We'll set our sampling method as we have it before. Also height 768. And CFG scale and the noise drink will leave it as default. Also, let's go now enable our step animation. Same, we can go 15 seconds and we'll pause three. So I'll just keep it the exactly same as before. And I think this is, will be good for the test. So let's go ahead, click generate. And here I have an image that nothing look like. The main problem is I forgot my prompt. So let's go ahead, back to our prompt. I'm copy pasting positive and negative. So we want to use it. Okay, let's go ahead, generate again. When we render image to image, it will actually use in different folders. This is we're using our default folder is in called image to image. And also we have it same animations in other ones. Let's go ahead. I'm going to sort by the time when we did this. And this is our last animation. Of course, if we look on the render, it's nothing look like our image. And of course, our animations will showing this as well. So it does not work very well. To make it a little bit more image affecting, we need to work a little bit better with reducing the noise string. And it's what we actually saw in this animation, that our starting point was not as our image. It was too much different noise. So let's go ahead and take our denoise string and we'll take down to about 40. In some cases, it's recommend around 25, but we'll try to go this way. And let's go click generate. We can little bit spy and look as it generating all of these frames. You can see we're much closer now to our original image that created with our base. And as a preview going, same. We have it on a different backdrop, change some clothing, change face on the model, but it does look very close. And of course, if we go and check our animation, we should have it similar result. And we can preview start. Notice right here, our start point, it's very close to what image we had before, because this is about 44. And this is where kind of nice to optimize because I can see and tell what a denoise string maximum I can put it because maximum will give me more flexibility in creation to create this image before it's become non recognizable. And you can see right here we have our animations going. And 44 maybe was a little bit too much too close. So in this case, we can go back and we can put it about 55. So let's go ahead, try this one as well. Okay, so our render complete, and you can see we actually have a double hands. We have some problems here, but in this case, we still have a little bit better flexibility. And if we look on our animations, 
you can see our start point was with quite a bit noise and here I see where the problem with the hands kind of start happening and of course as we're going to process through all the steps we definitely can see so here's a become problem or we're getting two not enough details or details can confuse so in this case we have the power of the control net coming and nice things we can use it of course the step animations with control net let's go ahead expand control net and I'm going to put it this image inside and we are actually going to utilize all those options maybe you know two three ones it's for the background we want to use it now so for this I'm going to utilize Kenny and the top this is latest control net if yours look a little bit different you probably want to update and it's just helpful you can still select from processors if you need it but this way with Kenny and its nice models much much easy to select okay next what we want to do pre-process resolution and this is usually I put it the highest number that I have at 768 we leave it all threshold here and we leave it a control mode balance for this so right on the between preprocessor and model you can see the kind of spark or whatever effect so click on this this is teeny tiny icon that let us preview and be sure our model is look okay so we're going to use this model notice this is does not necessarily specify the pose of the model but it is give it us outline elements that is could be good or it's bad depending on how we're going but I want to keep it this way except for the control weight I want just a little bit reduced because I want to have it flexibility in the background next we're going to, let's go also enable I always forget to click this button so let's go next to control net unit 2 now I'm remembered to enable so I do this I'm going to copy this image and now we're going to use it open pose by default I want to use the full and control we again can click on this icon to preview and it should give it us a very nice pose right here you can see selection also I want switch in control mode control net is more important so they keep it pose as I want it because I don't want double hands so this time we leave it everything as default for now and let's go click generate and of course now if we preview it's much much closer to what we have before we have position on the hands we change backgrounds but else is look very close and if we check how the process was going this is our original notice in position hands pose and everything this is help from control net and I notice how solid they are also the sharp line on the fingers and everything this has come from the Kenny type of control net combining them we have very strong pose same like on the close and if we preview we can see how it was created by analyzing and see that how strong effect we have it I know I can increase my denoise string more so let's go ahead and put it 7.5 if you remember before if we're using 7.5 without the canny and without all of this we had quite a bit different image because noise was is too strong so let's go ahead generate now and we'll check after in animations to see how that was affecting okay after render complete we can see we had a very nice render and look on this position hands in everything so let's go ahead check animation for this and the same things the analysis I can look and say okay this is sharp hand position and face this is process by canning and posing so I know I can even push more far to create it the my animations so I can go check and you can see how the the noise step was taking with keeping all fingers arms everything look good on this animation let's go ahead and try going very crazy we're going to all the way to one so this is like total noise over we'll see how well it will survive and again this is will process for us very nice to see what's happening with AI what is will start as our main noise generator and if we look on our intermediate notice right here we generating all of these different skip different images and reason is because we have a two control net 
the ball will generate images based on this before they come and combine them together. So it's kind of very interesting to see the mechanics behind of the uh, generating images. You can see right here we have it our canning, we have it our poses or images, and how they're all going to get an image and uh, control net, and in the end how they all combine together to create that single animation. Okay, so right here our complete render. And you can see it's actually did a very good job. It's a remove the chair, but pause and all those other features, it's the same. This is what power of control net. But of course, I want to go and see how steps, what steps was taking. And I can see this is our first. Of course, we have a nice set from canning. Control net and a pause. And you can see how it start adjusting, working on details on the hands. Feet and creating our final image. I think overall this is very nice extension that allowed us not just to see the magic what is happening with the eye, how it's creating images, how it's pulled them from noise and literally denoising all of this look and everything. It's very nice to see behind the hood. It's also great tools to actually see the step what's happening and help to determine what is the best settings for us will be to create specific animation or image. Obviously, this is will be nice steps to do before I'm going to create animations like in the form or ABC sync because I know what steps and how far I can push it. As well, if I need it, I can reuse the seed, run some animation, and see how close will be my original image, or replace maybe with different frame and see what's happening with different frame as well. And of course, after render completed, we can always put it side by side side not just the images but two animations and see how well the match and what changes was so it will help us in the future to create same look it doesn't matter if we do stills or animations at least more predictability in the result what we wanted thank you for watching this video if you like it please subscribe thumbs up share click on this notification button your support is greatly appreciated for me to create more videos and have a great time to do your own work.